Phil Nacho's crew. This is Paul, Dr. Nacho with a spicy toppings episode. A spicy toppings episode is designed for us to look inside that nacho plate at some spicy things going on in our dentisting lives. Things that they definitely don't talk about in dental school. Stories we can share with each other. And I'm honored to have Dr. Jeff Buski here, a fellow mad medium age dentist. Welcome uh -huh. to Spicy Toppings, Jeff. And just share with our audience, these are supposed to be fun conversations. I like, I talk about orienting your mind. When you're a dentist, you walk into a room, you say, what am I even supposed to be doing in here? You say, oh, there's a crown out. I'm going to put this crown in. So we're busy on online. Share with us your dentisting story with the group so they get to know who you are. Yeah, man. Uh, thanks for having me, Paul. I appreciate it. So I've been doing dentistry, it feels like forever now, about 23 years. You know, wanted to quit multiple times over that time frame with all different trials, tribulations, and, and everything there. But, uh, you know, I've been in Granbury, Texas, which is a little bit west and south of Fort Worth for a long, long time. Uh, practiced with a guy that you probably know, Bruce Baird. He and I were partners yeah, for 16 know, years. And, uh, you know, I was sad to see him retire and go, but, uh, you know, he's, he's earned his retirement. Let's put yeah. it that way. <laughs> I have to say, dentists, I mean, you know, they set up these dental student hunger games, as we'll talk about, and they don't create bonding. But, you know, dentisting hours are dog year hours. I mean, doing full contact arts and grafts on people who don't want to be there. It's yeah. a, I, I now am a practice broker. I'm a speaker. I yes. do other things outside of dentistry. And I was there, and I was just at my office on Tuesday. One hour of patient care is not equivalent to one hour of other stuff. It's like three X that. And I think it has to do with the energy around it. Because while we're doing great things, people don't always want to be there. So you've been really genuine and authentic in sharing. It's not an easy journey, you know, through this. No. So let's talk about, you know, if we look like this, some of the concerns you've had in your dental life, some of the challenges, what have those looked like? Well, some of the biggest challenges for me, Paul, was the fact that, you know, at, think, think back to when you were in dental school, right? And I think one of the things that you kind of get screwed over with is you were never taught, trained, or educated on how to be a leader right. at all. Zero, zero, zero essence of that. And I really feel like there's two huge problems today. And that is this one that you were never taught, trained, or educated how to be a leader. The second is it feels like we play this game isolated on this island alone, right? Sure, yeah. And so between those two things, you're kind of screwed. And so it doesn't matter with what's happening now, like with you go to COVID or post COVID or before COVID, any of those things that are happening, the biggest problems in dentistry, people think, oh, it's a marketing problem or it's an insurance problem. The reality is no, that you're playing the game alone and you were never taught how to be a leader. And that's one of the biggest things that I realized was a shortcoming for myself was, shoot, I was not ever taught how to be a real leader. I was taught, and there's, I think there's a, a, a confusion of identity here because you're taught to be a dentist and, and there's a difference between a leader and a dentist. A leader is very different than a dentist. A dentist is trained to fix mouths, fix teeth, right? You're a tooth carpenter, whatever you want to call it. But a leader looks at things very, very differently. A leader takes an opportunity to not only fix problems, but also identifies needs and then fills those spaces. I mean, I was grabbing this book, The E-Myth Revisit, which I have near me. And I think, you know, Michael Gerber, who I know has done some dental work now, he should change it maybe for a dental version to the L-Myth Revisited, which is the leadership myth. Because, Absolutely. you know, we talk about the entrepreneur, the manager, the technician, and dentists have to do all of it. And you talked about games. I did want to say that, you know, well, as a kid, people told me any of my dreams could come true if I worked hard enough. But that was a lie because I never could dunk a basketball in the NBA. So now I just you know, live out there. But you, I played a tremendous amount of team sports. Not tremendous, but I played team sports. And I also was a restaurant server. And those are two examples of playing on this team. And you're right. Dentists work in caves, not even islands. Eric Cornelius, my friend who's in Texas, we're in caves. And that's why we're seeing challenges with declining insurance reimbursement. Challenges this way because we're all spread out. So where did, where did leadership when did you first notice in your dental life? I, I love to talk about the journey, right? Because yeah. people don't always see where you came from. Where did you identify this as a challenge in your practice life, professional life? Tell, me, tell us a little more about that. Well, both. I mean, really, truly both. I mean, really as, as a leader, looking at it from the perspective, you know, in my personal life, I had been divorced once, got remarried, jumped back in, poured in so much energy back into business, falling back into those same business habits of like, I'm just going to hit the office harder and harder and harder. 
and having the mistake of like, if I just produce more, that's going to make everything okay. Like money is going to solve everything. Now money's important, but money is just like a tool. It makes you more of who you already are <laughs> in reality. And so I think the big realization for me, Paul was, um, you know, and, and I'll preface this with sorry, sorry for the one curse right here, but when my okay. wife, you know, looked at me one night and said, Jeff, I just, I didn't sign up for this shit. And I was just like, Whoa, you know, what is going on here? What am I doing with my life? What am I bringing home into the stress environment? And so those two things were intertwined. I was taking home stress that I was not managing from work and not being a great leader at work. And then I was being a poor leader in my home. So those two things totally intertwined, if that makes sense. I, I like that a lot. I want to look for a little picture to show because I was just making this for my video. And this is what I, this is the stories people need to hear because we often see people 15 years into practice and a young dentist says they have it all, they have it all figured out, but you don't, it's just a new set of challenges. So yes, you have debt, but then you start to make money, but you have a new set of challenges. And if you don't know how to go through those challenges, we see this with athletes all the time. If they can't adjust their game to their changing body, they don't succeed. And this happens with us. And it's, I really appreciate you authentically sharing your personal life story because that's a challenge. It's also managing the expectations of a spouse to understand how challenging dentistry is. And I, I break it up into this, Jeff, with, with dentists who are struggling. Is this how it's supposed to feel or not? So it's supposed to feel like you have six people asking you questions during the day, but it's yeah. not supposed to feel like you're at your office till 10 p.m. doing other stuff and not having a balance. So how is it supposed to feel? And, and you mentioned, and you're going to tell us about the four F's, but here's what I say. Dental nachos, helps dentists cry inside less a day, right? So that's a great, and we do that, and you say, by helping you with your dentist core. You know, your mind, I don't wanna brag, you're a very fit guy, but I can lift this entire weight here, so I don't know if you're impressed. <laughs> but your dentist core is your mind, your words, and your hands, and I have business, leadership, communication, clinical, but dental school, to use a popular term, they gaslight us, they think it's all about clinical, yep. when really, it's about how you think through your day and how you talk. Where did this come up with for you, even as a financially successful practice owner, how does this manifest itself in distress in other areas? Oh man, I mean, you know, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, in our one office, shoot, we've got 24, you know, people to, to look at. That's in one office, just managing all of that. That's a lot of people to look at managing, plus several other doctors, their personalities, all of those things. Plus then you're getting bombarded, like you said, you're getting bombarded you feel like a firefighter sometimes it's like you got this coming at you, this coming at you. And it's like, Oh man, how do I handle all this stuff? But unless you're in a good place of power and are really clear with your own vision, there's no way that you can handle all of that. Yeah. And so for me, I just was a poor manager of the stress and that's why. And then when my wife said that to me, I was like, okay, either I'm going to head down the door towards divorce number two, or I'm going to figure this out and I'm gonna turn a corner and change a whole different direction and take on a whole new trajectory. So, you know, we've got a saying, Paul, we're like, okay, victims wait and heroes create. So I can either wait around and be a victim and like, oh, poor me, I've got all this stuff going on. Or I can say, you know what? I'm gonna create my own reality. I'm gonna create my own future. I gotta change my story and this is what's gonna happen. I, lo I love that. So, I mean, that's, what is, so when you wanted to make this, you know, watershed moment to do this, what were some of the things that you, you do in that moment? If someone's going through this right now, whether they're watching it live, whether they're watching it a year from now, and they say, this sounds like me, I'm having either marital problems or fitness problems to talk about or this. What is the sort of the first step towards a different path towards success look like? Absolutely. And, and I ask myself this question every 90 days, Paul, the first most important question is, what do you want? First and foremost, get really super tight and clear about what do you want? That's called casting your own vision, right? The second question followed up immediately behind that is, okay, in order to have that, who do I have to become? Gotcha. And that is something that I ever, I'm always asking myself that. Every, I, I do 90 day cycles where I just, I work through things and I set targets that are just slightly past possible. And now, like I draw the line on the sidewalk, here's what's possible. All right, I'm gonna take one step beyond that. Like and now, who do I have to become to become that in those four domains that we look at? Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. I also think, and you know, I love teaching C and taking C. I mean, I think even just how we learn as dentists is so 
um, problematic because you think, oh, I'll take a C course on veneers and then I should do everything that C instructor does. When instead it's about a little bit better each day makes a lot better dentists in life. And dentists are way too hard on themselves do our toxic training because whether it's losing weight, saving money, getting better, it's not an overnight, an overnight transformation. But a lot of times people will give up if they say, oh, I didn't get the results of placing implants like this periodontist. They said, you're not supposed to. Um, tell me about these four F's. You know, you have a, I love things like this. I love acronyms. Tell me about these four F's and how you help people with that. Well, well one thing that I want to touch on real quick, because you just hit it right on the head. Like you're like, oh, if I go learn implants or if I go learn clear aligners or like, look at what people make for mistakes on, on leadership. Like, all right, I'm going to do that. And if I produce more, then I'm going to be a better leader. Or I'm going to buy these manuals or I'm going to buy this program, give it to my team members, let them implement it. Then I'll be a better leader. I'm going to hire this consultant to come in and they're going to tell my team what to do. Now I'm a better leader. Right. And it's all, all BS. In reality, that'd be like handing off your parenting going, oh, well, I hope my kid's okay. You know, let's see what they figure out and see what they become. You know, maybe A, serial killer or B, I don't know. What, you know, what, what could it be? So the reality is this, is that all of those things they have in common is, is that they're, you're waiting to be saved. And, and that is the opposite of a leader. A leader sets his own table, not going to eat crumbs off the floor of circumstance. And that's what we look at designing. So when you talk about the four F's, we're talking about four domains in which we create harmony simultaneously in somebody's life. And that's across their faith, their fitness, their family, and their finance. And all four of those areas really come into play. And when you have those working in harmony and balance, man, you have a, a life that is lit on fire. We call it living a leading edge life. So when you have that, it's like, man, I feel like I, now I've got the power to deal with all the fires that are coming at me every day. I, I love that. I want to jump in and share. And I love, you know, we have on the same idea with your dentisting core. This is what you do so that you can play the game of life in dentisting and maybe be successful on some days, not on others, just like an athlete, whether it's LeBron James or a quarterback, they do all this stuff, get these four Fs ready just so they can participate in the game at the highest level. But it doesn't mean you never throw an interception or miss a shot. It just means you know how, you know how to troubleshoot. I think that's one of the biggest challenges I see midway through my career, 18 years, is that I get a lot of questions from dentists of all different aspects, whether it's leadership, business, clinical, and they just don't know how to troubleshoot these things. So I think part of life is figuring out how to troubleshoot, whether it's a crown that doesn't fit, whether it's a team member that's toxic, whether that's a personal relationship you have to move on from. Do you find that too? Absolutely, man. I mean, and, and the way that I've come to look at that in my life is, is it's like, okay, these are just puzzles that I have to unpack. And as I go along further in my journey, I get bigger and bigger puzzles. And that's it. Like, I mean, you start out with little kids and you got the big pieces. Now it's down to like thousands of pieces, right? As you're going through and they keep getting smaller and smaller pieces and bigger puzzles. But that's going to be put in front of you. You're not going to get something put in front of you that, that the universe or God doesn't think that you can handle. That's truly it. And, and one of the things I'll say too is things get put in front of you that you have no other, that you have no other option of than handling. I mean, to move yeah. forward, you have to handle them. I've had just, unfortunately, some very, you know, sudden, difficult circumstances happen in my professional life, my personal life, that I just had to handle if I wanted to keep playing this game. I think one of the key points is developing a network of resources and people that you can count on. And when people say that they think you're a best friend, it's not always your best friend. Sometimes it's a professional advisor that you know you can go to, and they can answer a question in a day. Sometimes it's somebody within the dental industry. I mean, we have to go back to our cave mentality. If a dentist gets injured, gets sick, has a, so there's sudden deaths in dentistry, there's no one to pick up the slack at that practice. That to me is so problematic. We have hundreds, 100,000 dentists and we can't get on the same page. One of our great sponsors, the Brennan Brothers, who are awesome, are trying to create this network of inserting dentists when someone is, is injured, things like that, but it just is reflective of our bonding problem, to use a dental term. So <laughs> we need to make this better. I like this, Jeff, for a second though. I know people watch this and they say, this is speaking to me and I love challenges and I love, look, I, I promise this was not a thing set up for your live. This is what I did last night. So look what I have. I have a thing that says, commit to one thing to improve your happiness for 30 days. Yeah. Test it out, Big Gary. There you go, so man. Tell us about what you have for our audience and how they can learn more about it. We'll still talk more, but I just want to make sure yeah. that our audience knows what you have. 
Absolutely, dude. Um, you know, for, you've been a gracious, gracious host here, and I appreciate having me on as a guest. And one of the things that we wanted to have people do is, is be able to experience, just like you talked about, experience the power of community. And so to be able to be put in a community where you've got some like-minded docs who are wanting to level up their leadership, who are changing all those four areas in their life, and they are leveling up that game, to be put in that type of community and experience that and get training on all four of those areas on how to level up your own game. What we've decided to do for your audience is we're going to give a free 30 days awesome. into that. And then if they choose to stay, we're actually going to get, put the price at 97 a month after that, if they choose to stay. And so I have to share, I mean, with Medium Age Dentist, and I, you know, I know we sound sometimes like the people who say that, but like the availability to get resources, whether it's coaching, whether it's CE, whether it's technology, you know, I have a sponsor, Local Med, for like such a reasonable amount, they schedule patients in my office. This didn't exist when we were younger dentists. So I say, take advantage of these things that are between, you know, these 50 to $300 a month where you can test something to totally transform your life here. So that's super gracious. So how would they find out about doing the 30 day challenge complimentary and then continue to sign up? Where would they go for that? Perfect. If you just go to podcast F fc.com that's it that's yeah, simple yeah, my team will yep. put that in the comments but i encourage you guys my whole thing is aajm awareness attention awareness attention just find out momentum if you're here listening to this you're finding out from someone authentically sharing that hey i've been a success successful dentist but i've also been a very stressed out dentist and if you basically one of my favorite movies is back to the future you know as we wrap up if, if you could go back to the future and talk to yourself five years out of dental school with the knowledge you know now, what would you tell yourself? Dude, I would tell, I would tell myself, you know, when I look back at it, I thought the answer was just about learning all these amazing procedures, how to be able to do full mouth rehab, how to place implants. I thought all those things were the key to being successful. When I really look back at it and say, I would have spent the most time focusing on developing relationships and communication. I like and that. It wasn't until later on to be able to learn that. And that's one of the first things that we do now. And I do a lot more dentistry that I can do because of that. But it's just treating people like people, you know, yeah. and, it, and it's, it's not a hard or, or different secret. But the other thing is, is that when you, and I would tell myself too, go live a life that's exciting. Yeah. Because when you're living life that you create experiences for yourself and for your family and everything else, you're able to bring those experiences back in to your practice and allows you to communicate more efficiently and freely and effectively with your patients because you can relate. You tell stories and you're fun and you're not boring. You're not like, well, let me just get my gloves on here and just yeah. get in the mouth. You know I mean? Come yeah. on, dude, that, just be a person. That's why I say, I, one of the things I say, Jeff, is you're, you're allowed to have fun as a dentist. You're allowed to make it fun. And relationships are so key. The other thing that I think, and I think we're probably at a good age or stage to talk about this is, I've had so many awesome things happen in my life, but I've had some awful things. And when it happens, people say, life is so short. Life is too short. It's not true. Life is also very long. There's also, Seinfeld's a great joke on it. He goes, life is long. Like people on cruise ships trying to kill it off with crossword puzzles. That's his joke. But what I'm <laughs> sharing is, it is long. Like, you know, do that GPR AGD. It's not a wasted year. Take that thing. Have it. It's such important. Have experiences. Private practice isn't going anywhere. I've been eight, in there 18 years, even 23. And I think that's the message I'd like to get to dental students and young dentists because we're such overachievers. We're trying to rush to get to this place. But then by the time we get there, we say, man, I would have done things differently to preserve my sense of self, uh, maintain myself as a normal person. That's my whole thing at Dental Nachos. We used to be normal yeah. people. Yeah. We got all twisted around in dental school. How can we come out on the other side like we went in? Yeah, take, take the fun governor off, man. Like, don't be so serious and so stuffy, you know? Enjoy yourself. You're allowed, to, you're allowed to be funny. You're allowed to be silly. Be silly, be fun. And I mean, like, I love being silly with my kids and just having such a good time and, and, and letting them, you know, see me in that way. It's so pleasurable to be able to do that and deliver that authentically and just have a good time. And by I, the way, you know, when, when you have a spouse and they see you interacting that way with your kids, it just, it's like love bombs all over the place. Yeah. It's awesome. 
I think that's really a, a great message for us. And you know, it's a struggle to try to balance it all. It's a struggle of dadding, dentisting, all the other things that we do. But when we have resources to help us, that's the most important point because create those resources and connections with your ABC, always be connecting. I mean, what you've shared yeah. here with us, Jeff, we to really appreciate it. Um, you mentioned something about communication. We have a great nacho course that we give out as a totally free gift. If you text CONVO, C-O-N-V-O to 215-543-6454, we'll send that to you. But Jeff, share with us one more time. Uh, how can people take advantage of this really generous offer for the 30 days? Awesome. If you'll just go to podcastffc.com, then you'll be able to get in. You'll be able to go down, scroll down, put sign up for the challenge. It'll be totally free for the first 30 days. And you're in, man. We'd and love to have you be a part of the community. Get dropped in. Learn what's going on with the Fire Four. And you'll watch life start to change. So we'll say learn it, live it, and then lead it. And that's the easiest way. I love, love you what you did. I'll, I'll end this with, you know, life is about learning from your own mistakes, but also wise people learn from the mistakes of others. So I'll say yes. learn from the drop nachos of others where they say, hey, I dropped these nachos mid-career. If I were you, I wouldn't do this thing that you have plenty of life. So I really appreciate it, Jeff. Thanks for being an awesome nacho, an awesome guest here on Spicy Toppings. My pleasure, brother. Thank you. <laughs>